morning and welcome to another edition of the Market Review where we look at developments in the financial and capital market and how they affect the economy. Today we'll be discussing opportunities for increasing venture capital firms' investments in Nigeria. We need to have this conversation is Adebayo Adewolu is a partner at Triumph. Nice to have you on the program, Adebayo. Yeah, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you. Let's first begin with the fact that in 2020, a report showed that despite the total investment amounts dropping due to COVID-19 pandemic, Pathek Partners revealed the number of equity rounds in Africa increased by 63.6% to 359. Interesting, I would say. But remarkable as it is, I would like to know how many occurred in Nigeria, which is uh, uh, touted as Africa's largest economy. Yeah, it's interesting because um, out of that, um, I mean, looking at the past equity report and even a lot of the unreported deals that happen um, in our in our economy, we see that Nigeria is still largely the the biggest destination for venture capital investments, both um, from offshore and from um, from within the country. Um, out of that, I, I think about 21% of, um, of the investments related to that part of the report actually um, came into Nigeria. And um, it, it tells a number of things. It tells that despite of the pandemic and in spite of the pandemic, um, Nigeria still seems to be at least the preferred um, investment destination for this asset class um, amongst um, discerning investors that have a long-term view of the economy. Oh, well, quite remarkable. A very positive story to have amidst all the myriad of socioeconomic challenges that are occurring in the country. So quite very interesting. And um, which sectors in particular, in addition to this, which sectors uh, attracted this investment? Because it'd be nice to know. Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean the the usual the normal the usual suspects I would say um, largely um, financial technology or what we like to call fintech um, was, uh, was the largest um, with about twenty about a quarter of all those investments going into fintech and fintech like um, entities. Um, I think that was largely followed um, closely by, by agri tech, which is an emerging um, emerging space. Um, we've seen some uptake as well around um, the off-grid um, technology providers, especially off-grid power providers. Um, then another interesting bit is, is health tech. We've seen quite some investments in um, going into the health tech space. Some logistics, some mobility, some insurance, some education. But the biggest players are fintech by a wide margin, almost double the next um, contender, which is Agritech and um, Enterprise. So um, obviously on the back of strong, um, strong demographics, in especially with regards to areas like payments and wealth tech, in, in, in wealth tech offerings, you can see that um, it's, um, it's, it's the FinTechs that take the price. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, by these investments, one will now understand what are sectors that we must watch out for and uh, scale to attract those huge uh, investments. Quite interesting how fintech has continued to be the poster uh, segment or subsector attracting these huge investments. Now, let's look at the uh, broader context. Uh, from your experience and interaction with investors, how do you assess ease of doing business in Nigeria? Um, is this encouraging more VC investment into the country? Uh, take note that this country has uh, played it as a very major role in this administration to improve the ease of doing business environment for investors. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I would, um, I would say the biggest driver is um, is just the shared demographics of, of the nature of Nigeria, because um, Nigeria has got a huge population, as we all know. Um, the economy as a result is, um, is the biggest on the continent, could be much better. Um, 
But the fact that this population is economically active and they need services, and these services need to be paid for in one way or the other, and the fact that economic inclusion is still a challenge to that, um, that creates, um, that leaves a, a relatively um, open field for an innovative um, solution provider to come and um, provide significant value and serve customers. That is, in my view, one of the biggest com and most compelling um, business cases for investing in Nigeria. In spite of all the macro challenges, in spite of all the other challenges you find around um, some of the not so good news that we hear about, um, about social issues, the biggest issue in my view is that there's just a market that needs to be served. And there are so many gaps and for each of the challenges that we have, frankly, it's an opportunity to provide a solution for a discerning and innovative um, investor. So to the extent that some people see challenges, other people see opportunities. And the fact is that it's in the midst of um, these challenges that you can create trans transformational um, change and transformational value. If an investor has the right conveying power and the right capital to be able to bring in all the different components that will make for a solution that will address the gaps that we have in our market. So in my view, um, despite all the challenges for, a, for, a, for an investor in this asset class or in this asset category that's got a long-term view of the market, which is what VC investments are really. You are taking a long-term view of a market. So if you take a long-term view of, of Nigeria, and um, you're willing to place a bet on Nigeria doing the, the Nigeria doing the right things and turning the curve on this um, on this current um, wave of uh, macro challenges. I think um, those who take that view will smile to the bank in in the next um, within the next five to ten years. Right, right. A big bet that things will turn around, and of course, uh, Nigeria is still the market of choice. Uh, very nice to get that from you, Mr. Debario. And I think investors are watching and will definitely be hearing the next steps they'll be taking. But how, how can companies uh, attract VCs to their uh, firms? And what should they be doing now to enhance that attraction? Because uh, we are in very challenging times. And financing, funding, uh, attracting those uh, funds that can help you scale your operations is very critical in this time. Yeah, I would um, I would argue that um, I think the most important thing is a winning team, right? The because a team puts together a proposition, and um, a lot of times this proposition requires when I mean when the rubber like they say when the rubber hits the road that's when you know that whether your proposition would work or not, right? So a team that's able to reinvent itself and iterate very quickly. Um, would more often than not be able to creatively adapt to different market dynamics and be able to prefer solutions that maybe not be, that could probably not be the first thing they had in mind, but based on their interaction with the market, they're able to discern that this is where the market is going and this is a gap that we see that we can use our proposition to fit and they can sort of um, repurpose their offering to meet that obvious gap. Because one thing that um, investors want to see is that they want to see a team that is not just fixated on one size fits all or one way to approach an issue or one way to approach a market. They want to see a team that's able to, based on the data that's getting from the current um, sort of iteration of whatever offering they're bringing to the market, they're able to take it back, they're able to fit it into a feedback loop, and they're able to use that to sort of reinvent themselves and enrich the offering that they have um, for for the market. So in my view, um, one of the biggest things is, is a winning team. Obviously, you need, to, you need to put in some structure around your team so that um, even though you're small, you're able to sort of do things properly. You're able to be disciplined around compliance. You're able to be disciplined around, around um, your taxes, around putting your, all your the necessary contracts in place. Your accounting is tidy and um, your books are tidy and um, your legal agreements are tidy, so that um, when, a, when an investor or a VC investor comes to 
do some sort of due diligence. And at least they, even though you may be small and you know, try to find your feet, things are relatively tidy. And um, yeah, they're able to make a call on um, how well you, because really the morning shows the day. If at the beginning you're just all over the place, um, you, it, 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 an investor will likely discount whatever, even if you have a winning proposition, they'll probably discount whatever value they're going to place on your, on your, on your, on your, on your, on your company. So very important, the winning team will attract and continue to be the jewel for any investor. So uh, that's a very key one uh, to note. I like the part of the structure because um, this has been something that VCP firms raise over time, structure. Uh, yeah, the structure thing is actually really important mm -hmm. because the, and it doesn't have, I think sometimes people have the misconception that putting in place a structure is expensive. It's actually not. Right, it's just a discipline to, to get it done. And it's the things we tell founders that you need to train yourself to be able to be disciplined enough so that you and your team put in the pain to put in the structure early because those are the real determinants of value. Mm -hmm. When the, I mean, a company that's got good books with a good accounting system will probably get investors quicker and faster than a company that's just got its books all over the place. Because that gives investors confidence that we know exactly what we're getting into. These books are proper. We can place reliance on what we're seeing. Unlike some, some other company that there's just no way to validate that the records are, the records are, are, are a true and proper reflection of what the company is putting forward. Yeah, very true. Founders must be disciplined to put the structures and, of course, good books. Uh, attract investments. Very, very interesting things you've uh, shared here. And now, I'd like to know from you, what are those things that you see that will shape the um, turn of events in second half of the year 2021 as you look at the activities of uh, VCs in Nigeria? Um, next round of investments and which class of startups are we uh, seeing that will be considered? Already you've talked about the fact that fintech has been the leader. Will fintech continue to lead and uh, agri-tech and like you said, obvious solutions, which additional sectors uh, are you seeing benefiting? Yeah, I mean, I see some, some market defining market infrastructure plays that potentially would, um, would um, cause transformational change in, um, in the way our markets operate. So, um, there are initiatives around building some market infrastructure that would help reduce friction because one of the biggest challenges with accessing markets in Nigeria today is the lack of trust and, the, and, the, and that there's so much friction. So any market infrastructure play that would help remove friction and help build trust in, in the operations of the market would, would help um, you know, it would be one that would be of interest to, to investors. We've seen the way um, the regulators are sort of taking, taking initiatives around um, with the SEC, for instance, taking initiatives around um, the wealth tech companies and coming up with license categories to address the, the, the operations of that market. And once that sort of fiction, because that's some of the fiction that we see, once that sort of fiction is removed, and there's a clear regulatory framework for engagement. You can see that we can see investments coming into, into, that, into that space. And also when I talk of market infrastructure, things like identity management in other market, in other, in other markets, um, is largely being solved for banking, but there are still other markets that is still a challenge. So if we're able to deal with the issues around identity management, we can remove the friction that leads to customer onboarding. And once customers are onboarded, we can, because we need to get something clear, right? People still save in Nigeria, right? Yeah. But people don't get wealthy from saving. People get wealthy from investing. Yeah. And the process of investing today, right, is quite cumbersome and it's onerous on the average Nigerian. So for the enlightened person, you can take the pay to fill out the forms and all of that and submit and all of that. But for the average Nigerian in Kano or in Makodi or in or in Uyo or, or in Birmingham, right? How do they get access to an asset manager 
and onboard themselves and be able to invest rather than save because it's really through investing that you deepen the capital market and you're able to help um, a company a country grow right mm -hmm. so that fiction needs to be removed and we've seen any initiative that helps remove that fiction be it market infrastructure be it wealth tech i see it as, a, as something that's going to be a winning investment in the next um, half year and um, even in the, in the upcoming um, short to medium term I like, I like that concept of the market infrastructure. It's very important because we need to address those uh, frictions to allow investors to uh, really navigate the, the market. Now, let's talk about the fact that um, Triumph worked out uh, its uh, customer experience model. Um, how does this help the VC industry and how does this impact markets uh, like Nigeria? I think it's something that we've um, typically for a VC, right? Uh, who are your clients? Who are your customers? Mm -hmm. Your customers are largely your 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 the people who invest in you because people should not forget that a VC fund gets investments from third parties and then and for that own invests in founders or in startups that they that they consider to be um, to be. To be viable and aligned with their investment thesis. So there are two broad client categories that you, you have in a in a VC world. There are the limited partners that are investing in your fund, yeah. who you have to really manage in a way that shows them that their investments are returning the right return, the appropriate return, and also aligns with the values that they that they subscribe to. And then there are your founders who you are dealing with who really you have to show good faith in, have to support to provide um, a relevant domain experience and um, and just the regular support around market entry, around uh, raising capital, around, um, in some cases, even technology, around um, introductions to ecosystems that would um, enhance the value of the offering that the, that the, um, that the founders are, are trying to bring to market. Mm -hmm. And also, giving them feedback on what, um, on what the market is saying and how they can potentially revise or tweak and fine tune their, their offering. So at Triumph, we believe that there's, um, there's not as much focus on, um, on LPs and the founders, especially in terms of engaging them in a way that shows that you, I mean, having passed through your, um, scrutiny and having invested in them shows that you believe in them shows that you can work with them to uh, to create value on the journey that they are on and um so that's why we've come up with some with a, with a, with a venture capital customer um interaction framework that we think is a is a reflection of how we think the market should be approaching these issues so definitely this will help to guide uh vc firms and others who want to really, really go big. It's very important that limited partners and the founders are carried along and engaged uh, to ensure that there's a very good uh, framework and value chain engagement. Yes, it is, absolutely. I mean, and um, one of the things we also see is that the need to give founders um, honest and empathetic feedback, right? You can give feedback without, um, and the founder genuinely knows that you are, looking out for their best interest. In, I mean, they might not like what they hear, but they know that um, what you have, the feedback you are giving them and the support you are giving is such that um, if they want to be successful um, they are, they, and they take that feedback on, it can, it can, it can, get, um, it can get them better traction. So sending, well, for us a trial, rather than just sending a generalized, um, rejection or if you're not going to make an investment in an entity, we try to provide um, guidance as to why we're not invested and what we think the event, the event the founder can, and his team can do better and where we think they can pretend, where we see their strengths and where we see their weaknesses and how they can sort of improve on that to, to have a better, a better, um, better outcomes. So um, I think that um, we think a triumph that just that interaction with founders and being able to provide that empathetic feedback. Because don't forget, the founder is emotionally invested 
yes. in their in their in the startup, right? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> it's 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 sometimes difficult for them to take that feedback. So you need to build that intimacy with them to let them realize that this is actually not from a place of just um, giving feedback for feedback's sake, but the fact that from a place of being vested in um, in the success of the of the founder and giving honest and empathetic feedback, I believe as we we found is one of the ways to achieve this. No. Uh, thank you very, very much, Mr. Adeba Yadewolu. It's a very interesting conversation we've had today. Quite encouraging to know that Nigeria leads in Africa despite our socioeconomic challenges when it comes to venture capital investments and uh, the rounds. At least 21% of 2020 activities is, 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 is encouraging. I know that we can do better. And also the fact that fintechs, agritechs, all good solutions, and areas like uh, logistics, amongst others, are also the sectors that are attracting this investment. And it's also very, very critical, like you said, second half of the year to watch how market infrastructure is laid out to address those uh, frictions so that we can see more activities from investors. And like you said, the ease of doing business remains very important. But of course, the triumph customer model is something that we would continue, I personally would continue to look at because in investments, like you already said, you must consider limited partners and founders. And like you already said, founders can be emotionally invested, so it's good to give them those feedbacks. And definitely, the VC industry environment would be much, much better positioned to support. And like you already said, companies in Nigeria too need to take structures seriously. Thank you once again for this very interesting conversation. And definitely, it's clear to see the opportunities for increasing investments from venture capital firms. Thanks, thanks for having me. Um, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure. Very good pleasure. And that will be all for this edition of the Market Review. You can join our website, www.proshareng.com. And when you click down, uh, go to the right hand of the bar, scroll and check for private equity. When you click on it, you'll see all the latest developments around the venture capital and private equity space and what is really happening. And also recently, like Triam has said, we rolled out reports on VC activities. Also, if you have questions and comments around venture capital investments and what we discussed today, send your views, comments, or questions to otoabasi.abasekong.proshieng.com, it's played on your screen, and we'll respond appropriately to you. Also, follow our social media platforms displayed on the screen. This period, we ask that you continue to stay safe. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.